Today for Mousetrap Monday, I have another really different mousetrap that I'm gonna try out. This is gonna be made from household items. Last week, I posted a video on making a mousetrap out of a clipboard, paper clip, and pencil, simple items you find around the house. Well, this time, I'm gonna to try to make a mousetrap out of a jar. This is a Mrs. Butterworth glass maple syrup jar. This is the larger one, it's 11 inches. And I think we can turn this into a mousetrap. I love searching through old junk piles with bottles. Usually I'm looking for glass to make arrowheads. I like to do flint napping, but when I saw this Mrs. Butterworth, I thought, hey, that might make a great mousetrap. And the reason is, is because the back here is so large. That's a great counterweight. This is gonna balance on some pivots right here. The mouse will go in the entrance hole by her head, try to get the bait, and as they move towards the back, that will shift the balance and she'll tip up like that. And when Mrs. Butterworth is standing, there's no way the mouse can get out. So the first step here is to put a pivot right on a balance point. It's right about there. You want it slightly heavier in front, but when a mouse moves towards the back, it will want to stand up. And to find that balance point, you just kind of hold it like that. Look for the right angle. It's right there on her hips. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to epoxy some nails here. I've bent the heads just a little bit to an angle so they'll be straight out. It's now the next day and you can see those nails now are epoxied. I let it cure overnight. I used JB Weld which is a two part epoxy. It's really strong and those nails look like they're just the right place to balance. So now I'm going to show you the stand I built for her and show you how this trap works. Here's the wooden base that I built for this trap. It comes complete with an access ramp. The mouse will climb up here, enter the trap. It has two posts here with slots. Those line up perfectly with the nails on the bottle, so they just slide in there, they're secure. And Mrs. Butterworth will lay flat. The mouse will enter through the hole in the bottle, trying to get that bait. And as it feeds, its weight will shift towards the back of the bottle, and it will cause her to stand up, and there's no way that mouse can get out. It's too slick in there, and it's a live animal trap. Mrs. Butterworth will catch the mice. Now you'll notice the natural balance point that I did on purpose here is when you let go, she'll stand up. And the reason I did that is I want this to be really sensitive. I'm going to counterbalance the head here, make it heavier with um, some grain as bait. So the mouse will crawl in, start feeding on that, and as it eats it or it shifts its weight, it will stand up and the grain will slide towards the bottom. The weight of the mouse will cause this to stand up. So it will be really sensitive and all we have to do to set it is put the grain in the bottle and uh, counterweight it on the head. I'll show you how that works and then we'll test it out with real mice. So I have several ounces of grain. Mice love to feed on the millet, sorghum, sunflower, buckwheat, all that. I'll just fill up the bottle here. I'll go to the bottom. And this will allow you to adjust the sensitivity by how much grain you put. Now it's all at the bottom, so that makes it stand up even quicker because it's heavier. But what you can do is you can tip this back and all that grain will go towards the front. And now, if you uh, set it down carefully, the head will be heavier and it will be counterbalanced. Now to set it, I want to make room for that mouse, so I'll kind of shove some of the grain a little farther forward, clean this up a little, but that will attract a lot of mice. They'll want to know where all this grain's coming from. Climb up here, crawl in the bottle, and as they feed and shift that weight, you'll see it naturally move forward, and she'll stand, and we got them. Let's go test this out. I know some mice that are in my cage I've been testing live animal traps with, and they're paid staff on Mouse Trap Mondays, and they love to test out these traps. So we're gonna go set the Mrs. Butterworth bottle trap, see if the mice will actually go in the bottle and if we can catch them. Well, we were able to catch a mouse in our Mrs. Butterworth trap, went in that hole to get the bait and it rocked up and now he's caught in the bottom. This trap definitely has some flaws. I noticed several times the mice, instead of going in the hole, climbed on top and were able to set it off without actually being in the bottle. So it's a creative idea, something unique, a novelty, but not the best trap design because mice can set it off without going in. But if you wait long enough, the mouse will go in for the bait and uh, we can get them. To release them, you just take this, turn it upside down, give it a shake, let all that bait out, and uh, 
It doesn't come out of that bottle too easy. It's able to hold on pretty good because it's angled at the bottom. Maybe I'll just let it come out on its own. This mouse just does not want to come out of this trap. I'm going to try it again. He wants to stay in there. And I think if I let go, he might run back in. But Mrs. Butterworth Mousetrap.